plane was flying to some outback areas in South Australia. In your lifetime, you've seen hundreds of planes, big ones, small ones, all different colours and shapes. Did you realise that when your great-grandfather was your age, he had probably never seen a plane? Your grandfather may remember seeing a World War I plane like this. This was designed by Geoffrey de Havilland and it's called the Airco DH-2. An interesting plane, about 8 metres long and 9 metres wide. And look at the pilot. He sits right up the front and he has to not only fly the plane but also fire the machine gun and reload it when it's empty. And also the propeller is in a strange position. Have a look at this. It's behind the pilot, spinning around, providing a thrust forcing air backwards so that the plane can go forwards. The body and the wings themselves were not made of metal, but rather they were made of cloth stretched over a wooden framework. And you'll notice that there are two of them. Each one is shaped like this, curved on the top, flat on the bottom. Air rushing over the top provided the lift for the plane to stay in the air. You can see they're held together by wooden struts and wires. Well, a plane of this sort would take about half an hour to fly across the English Channel, and maximum speed around about 150 kilometres per hour. That was 1916. In the next 20 years, planes became bigger, stronger and faster. And by 1940, the famous Spitfire came on the scene in England and was used during World War II. In fact, 19 squadrons of these planes were used in the Battle of Britain. They were very fast, very manoeuvrable, and you'll notice that they had machine guns, one on each wing. And, in fact, some people say that this was the only plane in England that could really match the Messerschmitt in those aerial duels over Britain. A very important plane in World War II. But around the same time, the passenger planes were also growing enormously in size. This was the Douglas DC-3, an American passenger plane, really very large. In fact, it was 20 metres long, had a wingspan of around 30 metres, and as you can see, it's about 5 metres high. An enormous plane with two huge engines. In fact, each of those engines was 1,200 horsepower. It could reach a maximum speed of about 270 kilometres per hour, and it had a range of nearly 2,500 kilometres. But the most amazing thing about it all is it could hold an enormous number of passengers, 46 of them. But, of course, that's nothing compared to some of the modern passenger planes, is it? You probably know that there are planes flying today that can hold more than 10 times as many passengers as a Douglas DC-3. The Boeing 747, the jumbo jet. Here I am, up on the wing, cheap seats. I guess I should really be inside with the other 490 passengers who are sitting up to 10 across. It's an absolutely enormous plane. Have a look at it. 60 metre wingspan. From the nose to the tip of the tail, it's more than 70 metres. And it's nearly 20 metres in height. A an absolutely incredible plane, and there are lots and lots of them flying all around the world. They can fly a range of up to 10,000 kilometres at heights of uh, around 10,000 metres. And the speed can be up to 970 kilometres per hour. That's the jumbo jet.